everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Newton's third law of motion. So before going to the Newton's third law of motion, let us look at some situations. The first one is a stone resting on the ground. Now we know what are the forces that are acting onto the stone. The first and the foremost one is due to the mass of this stone, a force that the stone exerts onto the ground because of the mass that it possesses and that force is what we call as the force of gravity with which it is attracted towards the earth. So this force is uh, due to the force of gravity which is called the weight of the stone. Now this force is acting in the downward direction right towards the center of the earth but still there is no movement in that direction. Why is it so? It is because uh, there is another force which acts exactly opposite to this force of gravity and this force is what we call as the force of reaction. So these two forces are acting in this case. The force of gravity is what this stone exerts onto the ground and the force of reaction is the reaction of the ground to the stone which means that the, uh, the ground exerts a force to the stone back and that force is what we call as the force of reaction. Now the force of gravity which the stone exerts onto the ground is what we call as the action force or the force of action and in return the force that the ground exerts onto the stone is what we call as the force of reaction or the reaction force. So here we have a pair of forces which we call as an action reaction pair. So these forces are acting on two different objects that is the action force is the force which acts on the ground and the force of reaction is what the ground exerts onto the stone. So this force is acting on the stone. So these two forces which constitute a pair acts on two different objects. That is the action force is acting on the ground and the reaction force is acting on the stone. Now these two forces that is the action and the reaction forces are exactly equal in magnitude but they are opposite in direction and that is the reason why they balance each other. We have already learned about balanced forces where the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and hence they add up to zero. So the net force acting on this stone is zero since these two forces which are acting onto the stone add up to zero or these two forces are equal and opposite, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And that is the reason why this stone is not digging into the earth and moving inside the earth. It, is, it, it stays at the same position because these two forces balance each other. So the stone stays at rest and in the same position uh, and that is because of these two forces balancing each other. Now let us look at another situation. So here a boy is pushing a wall. So what happens is uh, while pushing he exerts a force onto the wall in this direction. So the force on the wall is in this direction that is towards me. And in return the wall exerts a force which is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the man or to the boy which is in that direction that is away from me. Now even we have here a pair of forces which the boy exerts to the wall and in return the wall exerts to the boy. We have a common experience of hitting a wall right and we also get hurt when we hit a wall and that is, a, that is because the wall exerts an equal amount of force onto us and that is the reason why we get hurt when we hit a wall. So we have two forces, the one that the boy exerts onto the wall and the other one is the force that the wall exerts onto the boy. Now here this force which the uh, boy exerts to the wall is what we call as the action force 
and in the in return the wall exerts another force which is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the action force and that force is what we call as the reaction force so even in this case we have a pair of forces acting on two different objects that is the action force acts on the wall and the reaction force acts on the boy so these two forces are acting on two different objects and these two forces are also equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and that is the reason why the the wall and the boy both of them do not move at all so here when we push the wall we are also pushed backwards by the wall and this is because the wall pushes us with an equal force now let us look at another example so here uh, a ball is bouncing when it hits the floor now what happens here is when the ball hits the floor it exerts a force onto the floor which is the force on the floor by the ball now in return what happens is the floor exerts an equal amount of force to the ball and uh, as a result of which it bounces upwards so a force this uh, a force is also exerted by the floor onto the wall or onto the ball so as a result what happens is the ball when hits the ground it it bounces back in the air so even here we have two forces or a pair of forces now this force which the ball exerts onto the ground is what we call as the force of action and this force which the floor exerts onto the ball is called as the force of reaction and even these two forces are acting on two different objects that is the force of action that the that the ball exerts onto the floor acts on the floor while the force of reaction which the floor exerts onto the ball acts on the ball so there are two different objects on which these two forces or these this pair of force forces acts upon so we have a pair of forces which is acting upon two different objects and these two forces are also equal in magnitude and opposite in direction but one thing we observe here and that is even though we have forces exerting or acting on two both the objects that is the floor and the ball the ball bounces or the ball moves or it accelerates but the floor doesn't move at all it stays at rest even though the ball exerts a force onto the floor now this is because the two forces are equal in magnitude but the two objects on which these forces act upon are not equal in mass for example here we can see that the mass of this ball is much much less as compared to the mass of the floor now if we exert an equal force on these two objects the uh, the one which has a smaller mass will get a greater acceleration and the one which has a very very bigger mass will get very less accelerated but in this case what happens is the mass of the floor is much much greater as compared to the mass of the ball and that is the reason why an equal force when acts on these two objects produces acceleration which is visible to us in case of this ball but the acceleration that it produces in case of floor is not visible to us because it is that negligible and this is because of the difference in the masses of the bodies on which these two forces act upon or these two equal forces act upon now let us look at another example here a man steps out of the uh, out of the boat to the bank of the river or to the bank of the lake now here what happens is in order to step out of the boat or jump out of the boat what he has to do is he has to push the boat backwards only then he can jump to the bank or he can step out of the boat so what he does is he exerts a force in the backward direction to the boat so this force 
is the force which the man exerts onto the boat in the backward direction and in return what happens is the boat exerts an equal force onto the man in the forward direction and uh, by the result of which he moves to the bank and this is the force which the boat exerts onto the man. Now here the force that the man exerts onto the boat is what we call as the action force and the force that it uh, exerts back to the man is this force what we call as reaction force. So even here we have a pair of forces which consists of two forces that is action and reaction forces. Now these two forces are also equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Now here what happens is both the boat and the man move. There is no object which stays intact as a result of this force. Now with this uh, this happens because the, uh, the mass of this man is not too less as compared to the mass of the boat and that is the reason why both of them get accelerated and both the movements are visible to us. Now the acceleration that is produced in the man is what brings him to the bank and the acceleration which produces which gets produced in this boat moves it backwards. So here we see that an equal force when acts on these two objects produces acceleration in both the cases and this is because of a less difference between the mass of this man and the small boat. So we conclude here that when the man pushes the boat it moves backwards with the force that the man exerts on it and as a result it exerts a return force which we call as the reaction force which makes the man move to the bank. Now even in this case what we observe that these two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and are acting in two different bodies that is the man and the boat. The action force is acting upon the boat and the reaction force is acting upon the man. Now based on these four examples or these four situations we observe a few things. So let us list them out. So the first thing that we observe is that the action and reaction forces are always equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. And the second thing that we observed was that these forces act on two different objects and they never act on the same object. The, uh, on the basis of these observations, uh, we can formulate the third law of motion or the third law of motion is formulated on the basis of these, ex uh, these observations from nature. So the third law can be stated as when one object exerts a force on another object, the first, the second object instantaneously exerts a force onto the first object or back onto the first object. To be, to be precise, what we can say is the third law states that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So this is the statement of the Newton's third law of motion. One more thing that we have learned in this video was that even though the action and reaction forces are equal in magnitude, these forces may not produce equal accelerations. This is because each force acts on different bodies which have different masses. So these are all the things that we have learned in this video. So this was all about the third law of motion which is the Newton's third law of motion. And I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.